Hey guys and gals, welcome back to Luminaco with Matt. Matt and me. We're gonna, uh, <laughs> are we gonna bring back the southern boy? I'm from the south, from Georgia. I'm from Georgia. Amen, bro. Every year, the relatives who visit Rokanji are let out. <laughs> no, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. We need a couple beers in us before we can do that again. Yes. Um, every year, the relatives who visit Rokanji are let out a side of, okay. Screw that. Sorry for the uh, long time between uploads. I know we haven't uploaded in ages, and it's because mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. It's because I, uh, files suck. Yeah. For both of us. I mean, in different ways and in the same ways. Just, like, gets, gets piled on the last two weeks, you know, so. But we're back. That we are. And we're ready to rumble. Yep, definitely. Um, for some reason this isn't working, so oh. I'm going to use the space bar. Does the, um... I, I think it's it's because we started the game first and then put the controller in. Oh, okay. So we'd have to redo the entire intro and I don't really feel like doing that. I got you. you. I got you. Okay. No, that's fine. They said they're talking with each other about the rose's beauty and the state of their blooming this year. There was a single unhealthy rose among them, and Maria became overwhelmed with dejection at its state. Huh. Ha <laughs> ha. Time for, let's overanalyze every single sentence. Single unhealthy rose. Who's the single unhealthy rose? Maria is. Mm. Overwhelmed with dejection. She mm. sees herself in the rose. Yes. No. And... <laughs> but George uses quick wits, and saying she shouldn't look after it as if she felt sorry for it. He marked it with a candy wrapper and immediately restored Maria's good mood. Hold on, I'm having deja vu. Of course I am. Because this happened. Yeah. In the first, uh, in the first episode. Yeah. So we're recounting events now. I guess so. I was like, are we back at the first episode again? <laughs> I was like, did I click on the wrong save? And once again, uh, Battler, whom she had been getting along with all morning. Raised the subject of Halloween that Maria loved so much, and she began playing around energetically again. To Maria, those marshmallow jack lantern candies that her mother had bought for her were probably a treasure greater than any other. It seemed that several of them had been got, bought for her, and she demanded trick or treat from every person she met, giving them candy instead of the other way around. Maria, Halloween a witch. Do you hear dialogue? Yeah, do you? No. You don't hear dialogue? No, I just hear the music. Or maybe it's, uh... Is it only in one channel? Let me see, can I... Can I see that, just for a second? Oh, I don't know why. Alright. It's cause this probably... I have to put it on the way. Did that change anything? Uh, the music sounds louder. Music sounds louder? Yeah. Alright. So my, uh, computer is like... I built that thing when I was in 8th grade. Oh, so wow. It's pretty old. It is pretty old. Yeah, and it's falling apart. <laughs> Anyways. Alright. We're good. Cool. Mmm. <laughs> うーん、多分僕はもう少しディープな理由によるものだと思うな。何しろ、魔女のマリアちゃんだからね。そういや、飛行場でもマリアは。そうだ。地形。魔女が好きなんだ。ええ、大好きよ。困ったくらいに。あのくらいの年頃はファンタジックな存在に憧れるもんですからせめてテレビアニメのヒロインに憧れるくらいなら可愛いんだけどせめて、Instead <laughs> of a witch Maria becomes a magical girl <laughs> Magical girl Maria <laughs> It's probably a, um, a spin-off visual novel mm -hmm. called Magical Girl Maria Get on it, Alchemist <laughs> Judging by Rose's reactions, it seemed that as a mother, she did not find her daughter's love for witches pleasant. Oh, it's just another interjection. Um, did you did you see the um, 
the trailer for When They Cry 5 and 6? No. Well, this came out in 2000... I want to say 2008? 2009? This mod? No, just just Umineko. Oh, Umineko okay. in general came out in 2008, 2009. The writer of it, Rushki, he wrote Rushki 07. He wrote, is writing another When They Cry, and he uh, announced it. That's Hirashi, right? What? He wrote, he also wrote Hirashi. Yeah, he wrote Hirashi. If he, Hirashi was first, that, that's When They Cry 1 and 2, and this is 3 and 4. And he's finally again writing in 5 and 6, which is pretty cool. It's nice. called In the Storks Cry. The Storks? Huh. The, uh, the PV for it looks interesting. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. That's cool. Anyways. Seemingly all the cousins other than Battler were able to understand this and they shrugged their shoulders smiling awkwardly. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> As Battler asked that, George and Jessica let out a small oh, noise. It seemed they were too late. It almost looked as though Maria had been waiting for that question. <laughs> After looking happy for an instant, her expression turned with little mean as if to say, You don't know anything, do you? Ha <laughs> ha! You know nothing, Battler. It was the expression of an enthusiast who has been enraged by the ignorant statements of an outsider with a wrong impression. That's right, the Celts. Oh yeah. I love them. One year, born, 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 とくだな。春の Sun dies and revives. You know what else dies and revives? Uh. uh what? <laughs> On the 10th. The 10th, um. The, oh, the 10th of Twilight? 10th Twilight. I'll show me revive! Yeah! yeah. But that's. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> 再び日照時間が長くなり出す当時の日を太陽の復活の日とする考え方はとても面白いよね。タイムのメンションはスタート。That's that's what I've. That's literally what I've been saying since like the beginning of this. Unless time first... stops. Ha ha ha. It lingers longer again. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Are you just fucking with me? I can other confirm it. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Back to that, huh? And so it got to do with the relationship. It seemed that my casual urging for it had slightly inferior to Maria. She glared at me with eyes that told me to let her explain what that had to これ、ルプチが探ったと思う。10月と11月の狭間は生徒死が最も近くなる。ケルト人たちはこの時期に聖者の世界と死者やこの世ならざる者の世界が最も近づき、異界の住人たちがたくさん訪れると信じてたの。
Yes, Jessica, wink more. She's not even winking. <laughs> she just has one eye open and one eye closed. <laughs> It's a long wink. <laughs> the longest wink in history. It just looks like she's really having trouble making out <laughs> what's going on right now. So, she needs the hands over the eye, like the fucking telescope. Yeah. His knowledge was so extensive that the adults had started listening to him at some point. Mario, this is news normally always treated like the youngest, puffed out her chest and cried. <laughs> Rosa tried to say this was just a kid's story and that she wanted to quickly break up the circle and set the luggage down in the guest house, but nobody else agreed and she let out a heavy sigh. Yeah. I think she's a vampire, do you see that thing? Yeah. According to Mario, the souls of the dead weren't the only ones who visited the world of the non-human. There were also spirits that had an intimate connection to how people lived. It was because humans received the favors of those spirits that they were able to earn a wonderful blessing, and a year's worth of good crops. What's April? April Fool's Day. If it happened in April, it would be a joke, but now it's not. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're looking into this a little too much. Welcome to Overanalyzing Umineko with John. With John. Sabbatical. It's a sabbatical. Mm. You're taking a break right now from the death and the murder. That's, that's true, that's we are. Sabbatical. I'm wondering when we're gonna get back to it. Well, who does first? We, we find everybody in the shed, right? Mm -hmm. The shed. Yeah. The shed's on for a little bit, though. Yeah, we still have to go through the whole arguing about inheritance. The whole umbrella thing. The whole, yeah. We saw the, uh, the rose, so this uh, means pretty soon she'll come back and find the rose missing. But the way it's been going, it kind of, it while it intersects, it like shows us stuff that we didn't see in the first episode. So yes. it, it'll probably kind of skip over the things that we already saw. Probably. Halloween or maybe it'll show us what Maria saw. Maybe. That's a good point. つまり彼らにお菓子を施すのは一年の収穫への感謝の気持ちがあってもいいわけだねはいジョージお兄ちゃんの言う通りつまりハロウィンはこの世とあの世の交流のある時期ってわけなんだなそれでつまり魔女た
you just want to try to put people together who can never end up together, like some kind of sick like game mm-hmm. to you. Like sh- she's not benevolent. Well, so, put it this way, or maybe she's selectively benevolent. Or maybe, maybe, just maybe, Beatrice doesn't exist, and she's just a figment of everybody's imagination, and everybody sees her how they think she should be. Maria thinks Maria is a benevolent witch and a nice witch, therefore whenever she sees, she sees, in quotes, Beatrice, she's mm-hmm. benevolent and nice. Whenever Canon sees her, she's uh, evil and plotting stuff and being a terrible person. I would agree with that, except for the fact that we've seen multiple people interact with her at once. And whenever Shannon sees her, Shannon sees her as the person that is guiding her way and helping her forward and giving her a purpose. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody has their their own perspectives on Bay to Riche, but I don't think she... I don't think she appears in, like, a different form to other people, because we've seen, like, Shannon and Cannon talk to her, all three of them, at the same time, and it's not like they showed us a different interaction between her and Cannon and her and Shannon. Almost none of them would just... <laughs> just keep fucking going. Oh shit, music stopped. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, it's a good one. 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 ありがとうございます。でももうマリアはそういう年を卒業していますので、こら、やめなさいと言ってるでしょ。ロースコールマリア、ちゃんとシェアアップフォーチュー、ディスカッションアバウトブラックマジックアンダーザスニーカーズオ
どこまで私の顔を潰せば気が済むのよ As well as a curse, she twisted Marty's ear up and it seemed like he was going to snap off. Her expression in English spread across Marty's face when she stood on the tip of the toes as though they were like depending on it, trying to solve the pain on the ear that was being pulled. It was a sudden they stole the candy that Marty had been holding in her hand. Then she threw it onto the ground and stepped on it over and over. To Marty, it was supposed to be proof of her memory of the spent time, however brief, when she had enjoyed going shopping with her mother. It was being trampled by that very same mother. It was as though a brand was being pushed against Maya's eyes, leaving a mark that couldn't be erased. Oh my god. She struck Marty's head over and over again with her palm as she spoke. Jesus. She didn't hit Mario's face because the red swelling would stand out. Mario closed her eyes tightly, patiently, bearing her mother's violence. No, that wasn't quite it. She kept bearing it, muttering that over and over. Stop fucking hitting her! Rose's shoulders shook as she breathed, tired from hitting. Jesus. Maya had grabbed her hands together, was, was standing it, hoping her mother would come back quietly. Friggin' Maria now has CTE. Yeah! <laughs> she has CTE. She has physical trauma. She has PTSD. Emotional trauma. <laughs> Maybe we can understand why she's so fucked up. Maybe. 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 Marty, even unable to remember that it was already to cry, kept staring down at the trampled, unrecognized jack o' jack lantern candy. Holy shit. Pretty much. How much more are we gonna get of Rosa just being mother of the year? Oh, Rosa! <laughs> oh, Rosa! Where did you Go on, it's I was just I was just concussing my my daughter, but and, and abusing her outside of the guest house. But but uh, I'm okay now. It's fine. She's fine. We're all good. Baragas <laughs> tekita tama no de tsui tsui. I got carried away. Hayaku ni motsu o oite koi yo. That's the uh, that's a lowercase uppercase uh, tone when you go. I got carry, you know way. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you know how people type in lowercase uppercase like they type words with like alternating like, case letters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my best impression of that. That's pretty good. I like it. Anikin tokoe aisatsu ni ikouze. Hmm? Maria chan wa dou shitan ya? She's okay. Mada kada ni oru ka na. Kini ta bara ga aru mitai de. Not only is she abusive, but she's a fucking liar. She never could have skinny Sasilicotonishimasta. Rosa, on Nanoconi, on Nanocono Sekanga at the Coto. But as Tatua Tamani was Serua. Well, she did do that, remember? Did do what? Well, in, in Chapter One, it, it, it didn't. I don't think it showed her getting hit and crushed with the, 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 um, the lollipop, but she did. She did see the rose and didn't want to leave the rose, remember? Oh, no, 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 no. That was, that was, she saw the rose that was missing and didn't leave it. I'm, and, I'm, one, and wanted to find it. Yeah, yeah that, it was missing and she wanted to find it. Never mind, that happens later. Unless things are different this time around. Because it looked like things were getting cloudy in that last scene. Or maybe that's just my imagination. Okay, you are so just again, I don't know. 
I would assume it's the same story, but they're showing us different parts. Yeah. Maria left unpleasantly, but to Cannon, who had seen the whole thing, it looked like she was enduring as best she could. Doesn't fucking sound like it. <laughs> Kenny got down on his knees and picked up the trampled candy. It was tragic just looking at it. Oh no. He thought about dusting it off and returning it to her, but really couldn't do anything so with couldn't do so with it in that condition. As he was at a loss of what to do, he met eyes with Maria. No, they didn't meet. Maria was looking at the candy that Kenan had picked up. Right now, Maria's heart was surely the same as that tramp of candy, which had been crushed into a pulp. She opened her mouth and tossed it in the wrapper. Wrapper and, and all. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kenan realized this, but he didn't know what he should do. <laughs> Kenan remembered that an identical candy which he had received from Maria was in his pocket. Maria stuck at her hands. Cannon thought she was trying to set to heal the hand to Candy, but Maria didn't try to grasp it. Then Cannon realized she was asking him to give it back. <laughs> no matter how tragic it was, the trampled candy was Maria's. Oh, uh, just like the rose. Her mother had bought it for her. Oh, just like the the wilted dead rose. Oh. No matter how tragic, it had to be this candy. Oh, no. If only it could be made pretty again by dusting it off. Oh. Cannon hung his head. <laughs> Cannon held in the miserable, miserable candy she wanted. Maria took it and spoke. ありがとう。人間には誇りしか払えないけど、魔女には元通りに直すことができるよ。ベアトリーチなら簡単にね。ひひひひひひ。マリア様は、ベアトリーチ様のことを。<笑><�ughs> <laughs> There couldn't be anyone related to Shinomi if anyone didn't know about Beta Fuji's name with Battle as an exception. But just now Maria had told Battler about her proudly. She had spoken almost as though she had been meeting with Beta Fuji regularly. Inside of the fist, Cannon made it with his left hand hurt sharply. In the past, the wish called Beta Fuji had appeared and had tempted him and Shannon. He had always tried to make himself think it had been a bad dream. However, Shannon insisted that it had definitely been a real witch. And then, this summer, the shrine to the local Shinto god had been hit by lightning and had disappeared without a trace in the span of a single night. He had known that Shannon had broken the mirror, and he remembered too that the, upon the witch's departure she had left him with words that she would eventually be revived. And now, this girl who had no faith and a faith in Beatrice spoke as though she had met her. Cannon couldn't suppress a sense of something ominous growing up in his heart. No doubt. For a while, Maria remained silent as though she could see into Cannon's heart. As though she was waiting for his memory of Beatrice to come back to him. Then she spoke matter of factly. Maria is Beatrice to be a friend of Beatrice. I'm going to play together with you. I'm going to play? I'm going to play? 
We're going to play We're together. We're going to play together. Oh, that... Mm. See, Mario said that she was a nice and happy way to talk spells with her and cook stuff, remember? Of course. You're right. The face of the witch who can and tried to pretend it was a bad dream began to slowly creep into the back of his mind. And then... Dun dun dun! Then she stabs Cannon right there. He's really busy with his construction. What else is new? What if Kito's research is just like piles and piles of hentai? Oh my, I'm all shindiru. He's just in his study doing research for science. What if he's a zombie? What if he's a zombie idol? <laughs> you never know. It could be. What did Truck Coon get him? <laughs> I think so. Have you seen? Have you been watching Zombieland Saga? No, I've, I've, I've just heard about it. I, okay. I was planning. I was considering watching it, but I'm I'm just sticking with the two shows I'm watching currently. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. I I have never watched and had never planned to watch an idol show before, but. I started watching that show and it just like caught me. You gotta watch Reggie Star like that. It's my anime of the year. It's on my list. It's it's not really a real show. Either. It's it's one of those shows that's you think it's an idol show, but it's not really. But it's not. Yeah, you'll see that. Okay. Hot Stora Aki no Oi Sogashi no Naka Nitte o Tskete Harubaru Rock Genji Mama de Kiterundaze Oyaji Moskoshiwa I saw you could see more time on that. ほんとよね。何女先生。本当に研究や機嫌の問題なの。ベッドから起き上がれないくらいに容態が悪いって言うんじゃないの。ねえ。さて、ちょっとさ、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、
何が言いたいのよよせよ姉貴晩飯までには機嫌を直してくれるよう祈るそれに俺たちは到着したばかりまずは軽く挨拶に訪れただけだぜ親族会議は親父抜きだってできるいや兄弟で意見を統一してからじゃなきゃ話せねえことだっていろいろあるはずだぜな秀吉兄さんそうやルドルフ君の言う通りやわしらが全員顔を揃えるのは年に一度しかない貴重な時間を大事にし汚い話し合いをせんといかん。でも、その前に本家の素晴らしい調度品に囲まれた客まで、のんびりと紅茶を楽しむゆとりがあってもいいんじゃないかしら。Kyrie san's words seem to hold some slight admonishment towards all the people gathered in that place. They all understood, and as they cleared their voices and straightened their neckties, the atmosphere in the room returned to normal for a moment. Shitreshimas, Ocha o Mochi i t a s h i m a s h i t a Yo, Shannon chan! Yo, Shannon chan! That's me every time she comes on screen. Yo, Yo Shannon chan! ますますべっぴんさんになったな。You're damn right. シャンナンチャン、enter the parlor, pushing the serving cart. <laughs> oh? <laughs> Everyone decided to serve the poor some. <laughs> He didn't even bother to go back. <laughs> A wonderful aroma began to spread throughout the parlor. Looking at that scene, it would have been possible to guess the strained atmosphere which had been there all until right before Shannon had answered. Of course, Shannon, who was sitting out with tea, probably didn't even notice. Carrie made a gesture that seemed to laugh at everyone's adult appearance. How long are you going to keep this up? Rudolph didn't like it when Carrie took the initiative and spoke at the family conference. It was his worth as male pride. <laughs> He probably didn't want to look like a weak man taking his wife's advice. Worthless male pride. She understood that and was doing her best to refrain from saying anything unnecessary. Understandable. So she separated herself from the circle of siblings, which was good natured only in appearance, and enjoyed their tea near the window. Ara, Rosa san, Kyodai de Mizuiraz na no de wa? Kojo da wa? Gomen na sai. 気を悪くしないでうちの夫に呆れてるだけだから。Like、ああ、なるほどね。ああ、なるほどね。ああ、なるほどね。ああ、なるほどね。ああ、なるほどね。ああ、なるほどね。ああ、なるほどね。ああ、なるほどね。ああ、なるほどね。ああ、なるほどね。だいぶ風が出てきているようですね。枝葉があんなに揺れて。もう台風が近くまで来ているのでしょうね今夜あたりからはだいぶ降るのかしらマリアちゃんこの1年で随分立派になりましたそう見えます未だに自分のお洋服を畳むことすらできないんですよええこんなにも愛情たっぷりなお母さんと一緒なんですもの、oh, oh, oh. 心の豊かな子に成長しますよ、no. Oh, Beatrice! Oh, what if, what, what if Kirie just knows, knows what Rosa does to Maria and she's just like totally fucking with her? Just like, oh, she's、funny. such an affectionate mother who totally doesn't beat the shit out of her. <laughs> I don't need to say anything about that. Nope. Maybe she was unsure as to how Kirie meant that. <laughs> 母親失格ですよ。子に生まれる親は選べない。あの子がかわいそうで。お互い様じゃないですか。親だって生まれる子は選べない。どちらが悪いとかじゃなくて、一緒に生きていくんだという気持ちで、ゆっくり成長を見守ってあげればいいじゃないですか。ローザさんは毎日をマリアちゃんと過ごしてるから。小さな変化に気づかないかもしれないけれど1年ぶりに再会した私たちにはその大きな成長ぶりがよくわかりますよ
もし本気で言ってくれてるならありがとうございますそれでは失礼いたしますご用がありましたらいつでもお呼びつけくださいチェンバッドポイントリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッドリンバッ誇りの匂いがする紅茶を飲みに来たわけじゃねえぜよかろう一秒を争ってお前たちがしたいという話を聞こうじゃないか、really、やれやれたくましい人たちね早速始めたわ私も加わらないといけないわあの人たち私が主張しないと四人兄弟であることをすぐ忘れるからあなたも大変ねちょっと言葉を選ばなかったかしらごめんなさい。うん、うん、気にしてません。こちらこそごめんなさい。私たち互いに娘を持つ母親同士なんだから、もっと交流しなきゃいけないのに、いっつも会えば変な話ばかりで。この屋敷の空気のせいよ。はキリエはずだ。ついついだ。いや。ロズは、ロズは、ロズは、ロズは、ロズ But remember, I think at the very beginning it said that Battler, Kyrie, and Rudolph had come and they left Battler's younger sister at home because she was sick. Oh, okay. That was mentioned at the very beginning, though. Koko no Kuki o Kagato. It's more a touch of a gizu gizu s h i a t e r m o n I do remember that Kyrie is、uh, <coughs> Battler's mother, stepmother. So. Maybe she had.、Uh, either she had a daughter before she and Rudolph married, or she and Rudolph had a daughter. Rosa Santoa, Shinzo Kagi, the nice city there. Each do you could your chademo no mitaiwa? Ginzani, it's getting a sticky nucky satin garden. Zehi condo short I said. Arigato, Kiriza, Sono Toki, what Zehi. いやーねえ、急に空が暗くなってきたわ。まるでこの部屋の人たちが天気を悪くしてるみたい。もうゴロゴロなってるわ。あら、お釣りと来たかしら。There really were small specials of rain on the grass in the middle of the night. It seemed that the weather had grown the room was faster than they expected. Just then a silent thunderbolt struck inside Rose's head and she remembered that her beloved child was in the rose garden. A normal girl would think about going to the house if the weather got bad, but Mari was different. She would sometimes become stubborn and wouldn't matter when moved, no matter what rain,、uh, whether rain or even spirits fell from the sky. <laughs> That's right, I, I told、Dude. that kid, just stay there doing that forever, didn't I? <gasps> so this is different. Is it? Yeah, it is. Because she had the whole argument with Maria over the rose. In the first episode. But if she's going out now. Well, maybe the Remember, rose... she took a nap and fell asleep, and then when she woke out, she went out to get Maria? Maybe it skipped out through the whole rose thing. So Maria's back outside? I don't know, maybe. Well, let's, let's find out. At the small explanation, everyone turns to look over at Rosa. Nanda, do you stand on it? なんだなんだどうしたってんだあいついいじゃないすぐ戻るわよそれより始めたら私たちの本題そうねローザ抜きでも進められる話よ話を戻しましょう Rose d a s h from entrance hall from t h e r s g a r d e n When she opened the door, the wind that hit her was too strong to be called a breeze and told her that the typhoon was approaching faster than she had thought. Just as Curious said, small droplets of rain were mixing with the wind. There, were also the low rum but there was also the low rumble of thunder. It could start raining any time. 
Where was it headed for the Rose Garden? She headed for the place where she had scolded Maria a short while ago. It was almost lunchtime. The children had been told they could just come to the mansion at lunchtime. So they were probably in the guest house waiting to be called, even if Maria didn't come. They would surely think that I had taken her to the mansion with me and wouldn't worry much. After all, she was with her mother, so there shouldn't have been anything to worry about. Of course not. Except I was here and I'd thrown my daughter into the worsening weather outside all alone. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Oh, Are you ready? Oh, Are you ready? Know. It really was as I thought. She was standing rock stock still, exactly the same way she'd been in the place where I'd scolded her. Holding her hand was the candy I'd bought, given her and then stepped on and crushed. With that gripped in her hand, she'd been sitting there as the strong wind whipped her about her, tormenting her. Rosa buried her face into Mario's small chest, crying and begging for goodness. And those tears dripped down again as they had countless times before. If only the brilliant sun had been shining on the two of them, all of their cares would have been evaporated, and they would have felt like they could begin anew. However, what surrounded them, the two of them, was the worsening weather. The strong winds mixed in with the sound of thunder were saddening. Rosa noticed the sound of Maria sniffling. She had stood exposed to the wind for too long, she'd probably catch a cold. <laughs> the famous anime cold. Being outside for like one minute will make you catch a cold. Mama to Shani Oyashkini Kimasha. Oh, Ikanai. Toshte. <laughs> Are, you uh, ready? Are you ready? There was the thought that Mari had already forgiven her, so she never meant that she would refuse. But that expression on Mari's face didn't look like that of a child resisting her mother. So Rosa was unable to understand why Mary wanted to stand still in the girl's garden, pointlessly as the mother grew even worse. Mari answered that question. <laughs> 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 Maria? Rosa started to say something, faltered, and then fell silent. They had just gone to great lengths to make up with each other. She chose her words carefully, trying to get Maria to come with her to the mansion without denying the witch outright. Beatrice ga kuru. I'm gonna see how she finesses this. So, nara, koko jae nakute, oyashiki no naka de matchimashou. Itsu made mo konna kaze no naka ni itara, kaze o hite shimau wa. Kuru! <laughs> Mario pulled yet another sweet out of her handbag, running ooh ooh. Rosa was bewildered, not knowing what to do as Mario started being difficult again. Oh, she's coming. Just then, there was a sudden massive roar of thunder. Guess who it is, It was bitches. probably a sign. A sign that indicated this island had been closed off by the storm and detached from the common sense of reality. Yeah, probably. Therefore, I all, as of this moment, all common sense would no doubt be useless. <laughs> the wind blew even stronger in the middle of a blizzard, scattered rose petals. A figure appeared, leaving Rosa momentarily unable to imagine that this was a scene from reality. <laughs> no, probably it was... It had to be fantastical. 
because that figure was shaped like. Is she wearing something different? Is her outfit different? What was it before? It was like a like a frilly dress. This is like a. It was black before a black frilly dress. Yeah, this is like a, a like a woman's business suit. And she looks like a schoolgirl. She does. It's kind of hot. Anyway, <laughs> continue. <clears throat> <laughs> we dashed over to the figure. <laughs> Normally, Rizzo would scold her daughter, and she dashed over to a complete stranger. But Rizzo forgot about that, unable to do anything but stand there shocked. <laughs> it's been a while. She doesn't need this. She patted on his head as she said this, smiling the roguishly. Rosa couldn't have known the name of the woman who was happily spoiling Maria. However, Maria called her to her in the beginning when she had appeared. Therefore, even though Rosa never met her, even though she hadn't named herself, Rosa was able to learn her name. However, that name held a special meaning on Kenji, and there should only be a family. Yeah. There's no way something so stupid could. <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Is that what a jack-o'-lantern is supposed to be? Maybe? Oh, that's what a jack-o'-lantern is supposed to be. The witch noticed that the suit. <laughs> the witch noticed the suit that Mario was dressed like, What are you trying to get me? It was Mario's candy, which had been stomped on by Rose and had taken him found a pitiful shape. Oh, <laughs> Is she gonna say. Beato? Maria deliberately didn't say that it was her mother who had stepped on it. However, when the witch saw the candy, for some reason she looked at Rosa and grinned. <laughs> a chill went down Rosa's spine, and she said she had this gaze and see the other part of it. <laughs> Mario held out the candy gleefully. Rosa could do nothing but watch his unfold stunt. How could this person gloss over the fact that the candy was pitifully trampled in a way that could satisfy Maria? Mario thought so she believed it could be fixed as good as new. There's no way that could be done without real magic. これはこれは見事に潰れているな。さあさマリア、目を閉じて思い出してごらんなさい。本当はあんなにも素敵なお菓子だったから、思い出の中のお菓子はいつもふっくら。だからあなたも思い出してごらんなさい。本当はどんな
I smile forward to Beatrice, and his face different from the one that she'd shown Maria. Marawa no kao ga so maji maji to mirarete wa ano mo wa kouzo. At those words, it hit Rose strongly. Rose knew her face. She knew it from the portrait of the witch. But no, wait, was this Mr. Wound really? Maria, kono kashi no kawari ni. So. Oh, tegami. The witch pulled the western emblem from her pocket and gave it to Maria. Uh, hmm. However, Maria made to open it, the witch stopped. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't open it. You need to. Nara. それを開けるときはすぐに訪れるそれまで決して開けてはならない大事に持っているがよそなたを黄金教へいざなう。Subjectively, so maybe. No, not subjectively. It's literally different. Rosa was not there to witness Beatrice giving Maria the letter. And there was no rose dispute this time. It was replaced by the candy thing. It's gotta be different. Maybe it's magic. Magic doesn't exist. It doesn't, according to you, so it's not magic. Churchy. Although Goda is a magical girl, so we gotta give him a piece of it. Stop me through the chest! Hey! 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 Ooh, ice pick lobotomy. Ooh. <laughs> she probably hadn't imagined that the witch would speak to her too. Rose was bewildered by the second Western album which had been thrust before her. Look at their faces. She remembered having that seen that Western envelope before. There could be no mistake. It was King's special envelope and used when he wrote with his own hand and bearing the usual on the crest. Moreover, it was sealed with red sealing wax, and for still at an imprint which seems to have been made by the head's ring. In other words, irrespective of what was written inside, this woman who murdered called Beatrice was trusted enough that she was in charge of a personal letter from the current wish on the head. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? Is every... Are we revisiting this as if it's a different spin of the roulette? Like, are different people gonna die this time? In different... Can I be performing more? <clears throat> It's all just different, different spins of the roulette. Anyway. Or different games on the chessboard. Yeah. And then did the whole discussion we had last time about a chessboard being set up. Yeah, that's also true. Narabaukedorugayoi, <laughs> Rosa looked back and forth several times between the witch's face and envelope she had been handed. Today was the family conference, the biggest object in the discussion was the inheritance problem, so she had joined together with Ava and Rudolph, and they had planned to force certain conditions upon Kraus to try to extort a prompt payment of several hundred million yen out of him. It was as if the witch could see through all of that. And when all the siblings are gathered, what is she planning on announcing to us? With a personal envelope that no one could but the issue on my head can use. Maria? Tenkigakuzerzo. Guest to house back to her laughing. And turned off towards the mansion with an air of composure. Mari saw her off in an energetic reply and then dashed off to the guest house, leaving Rosa where she was. As though she didn't want to waste a single second in informing the other cousins of her good fortune and each the witch. Ultimately, Rosa was left to own the real spot and as the winds became stronger, unable to do anything but pray that what had happened was just an agent. Oh, 
going inside. When the witch entered the entrance hall, Genji was there. With a respectful bow, Genji welcomed the guest who had approached from the entrance hall. <laughs> Is she gonna show up at the dining table? Oh man. <laughs> oh no! What is going on? <笑>久しぶりだな。ゲーム。ゲームはね、ま、<laughs> Full of life. The witch's laugh was probably because she knew that Kinzo's own doctor had told him that he would not have much live, would not live much longer. However, if anyone actually looked at Kinzo, his injury, energy and vigor, which made it extremely difficult to imagine that his remaining life was really slim, might make it natural to call him for life. Maybe the witch had laughed at that. <laughs> <laughs> As the witch grinned, she started walking, leaving Genji behind. Her gate was like that of a family where we were literally inside the mansion well. Genji followed her, as though he served her. At that very moment, Kyrie came out of the parlor. She'd probably come out to fix the makeup or something. And when she saw Genji following the witch, she was surprised, although her expression did not change. There was a visitor for Kinzo, whose remaining life was not long, on the day of the family conference when the fate of the inheritance was decided. And furthermore, this person was well enough acquainted with the reason around their family that Genji was falling behind for. And Kyrie immediately realized that this person that she had never met before was someone deeply important. Kyrie made eyes with the witch, realizing that it would be rude to pretend not to know she grew with the witch. <laughs> In this exchange, Kerry realized that this woman was a guest of considerable high rank within the Shimon and their family. And the fact that she was a guest at that level, coupled with the face of the entrance hall portrait behind her, made Kerry's eyes open wide in an instant. Mm. じめまして。切り絵と申します。初対面でしょうか。もし以前に挨拶をしていたなら、名前を忘れてしまって申し訳ございません。ええ。ありがとう。ゆすうすは想像がついているくせに、わらわにあえて名乗らそうというのか。
なら良い頭痛薬がありますよ<笑>用意しましょう<笑> Of course you do.、Mm-hmm. I don't know how much medic- medicine can help when someone's hitting you on the back of the head with a pipe. <laughs> I still think that's the funniest thing ever. I do too. The whole aim from Kinza's study was to send a sweet poison particular to that green liquor. Genji was completely used to it, it did not grimace. Nicole and Mewich didn't grimace either. すでに数年になるかと思います。それほどまでに、わらわをカゴの鳥としたいか。ああ、れな。それを願うそなたが、今やカゴの鳥、書斎の亡霊ではないか。それに気づけぬとは、ああ、れな男よ。あなた様と再びお会いする日までは。おそらく文字通り亡霊となっても研究を続けられるでしょう愛か狂気か猛衆かそれも講じれば魔力となるか悲しき魔術師よ何だこれは<笑>魔よけかあやつめこんなものに頼らなければその扉はベアトリーチェ様にはおつらいものと伺っております私がお分けいたしましょうかいやよいあやつが勝てばわらわは永遠のカゴの鳥あやつが負ければ愛に狂いすべてを失った哀れな魔術師の生涯が笑い草となって残るだけもはや金蔵もわらわさえもゲーム版に並べられた駒に過ぎぬあとはルーレットの目が勝敗を開けるだけよルーレットが目を見せるまでわらわと金蔵が再会する必要はない Hardly. <laughs> すべての生涯を投げ出したローマ術師の最後のギャンブルそのちりざまを楽しませてもらうぞ<笑>